This is part two of the review of the seven hermetic principles espoused in the writings of Hermes Trismegistus, the modern version of which is printed in the book The Kybalion by the Three Initiates. The universal laws or universal principles govern everything in the universe. In the last video, I discussed the first three of the seven hermetic principles, those that are absolute and eternal, meaning they are immutable and unchangeable. The remaining four of the seven universal laws are transitory and they can be transcended. These are the lower mutable laws. These are the law of polarity, the law of rhythm, the law of cause and effect, and the law of gender. The fourth of the universal laws is the law of polarity. Everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet. All truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. Therefore, there are two sides to everything. Everything in this world, in the present state of human consciousness, appears to have two poles, the positive and the negative poles. Good and evil, heaven and hell, life and death, light and darkness, day and night, white and black, south and north, peace and war, yes and no, positive and negative. The difference between these things that seem like they are diametrically opposed to each other is really only a matter of degree. The law and laws are the two opposite poles of one thing. For example, heat and cold are really identical in nature. The difference is merely a matter of degree. The thermometer has two poles, on one end the highest pole and on the other end the lowest. And between these two are many degrees of heat and cold. But there's no absolute standard. All is a matter of degree. There's no place on the thermometer where we can say this is where heat stops and cold begins. The terms high and low are relative. They merely represent poles of the same thing. Another example of the opposite pairs are the opposite poles of love and hate. These are two sides of the same coin. Hate and love are the same as much as they are opposite. We say there is light and there is darkness, yet this is not a correct statement. There is only light. Darkness is but a suppositional absence of light. There is no such thing as real darkness because light penetrates everywhere. We think that light is only what we see, yet we perceive only the range of rays from red to violet, that is, the six colors of the spectrum. There are also rays below the red and beyond the violet, which we do not see. And those invisible rays are the most powerful. Light, visible and invisible, is everywhere. Therefore, there cannot be, there is no darkness. There are only degrees in different kinds of light. All is light. Even that seemingly utter darkness and void of the interstellar space, is penetrated by vibrations, invisible to the human eye, of the absolute light, which is attraction or love. Knowledge of this hermetic principle allows us to better understand our own mental states, because if we can see that these states of mind are only a matter of degree, and realize we can raise or lower the vibration at will, in effect, to change our mental poles and master our state of mind, we can gain control over them. This is called transmutation, being able to change the polarity when we need to in order to maintain a state of equilibrium and balance. We can rise above the destructive emotions and consciously choose to focus on higher emotions. By not becoming attached to either side of the poles, we recognize them for what they are, the same thing. This will result in raising our overall vibration. The law of polarity is not a eternal law. It is mutable. The fifth of the universal laws is the law of rhythm. According to the Kybalion, everything flows out and in, everything has its tides, all things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. 
This means in everything is manifested a measure motion. As with the principle of polarity, with the principle of rhythm, there are two poles between which the pendulum of rhythm swings. There's always an action and a reaction, an advance and a retreat, a rising and a swinging. This is true with regard to humans, animals, plants, minerals, forces, energy, mind and matter, and even spirit. Some examples of how this works in the physical world is the rise and fall of nations, in the life history of all things, and even in the mental states of humans. Night follows day and day night. The pendulum swings from summer to winter and back again. The principle is of universal application. The principle of rhythm is considered a universal law as applied to material things, but the Hermetists know that its manifestations and influence extend to the mental activities of man as well. This is how we can account for the succession of moods, feelings, and the change in emotions that we notice in ourselves. Studying how the principle of rhythm works can help us transmute these. The Hermetic Masters discovered that even while the principle of rhythm was invariable, still there were two planes of its manifestation as far as the mental phenomena are concerned. These are the two phases of consciousness, the lower and the higher. If we come to an understanding of the law of rhythm, we are enabled to rise to the higher plane and escape the swing of the rhythmic pendulum, which manifested on the lower plane. This is like rising above a thing and letting it pass beneath you. This is what the Hermetic Masters understood. When the forward movement of the law of rhythm starts, let use its power in every possible direction. No matter what we will endeavor to do during that time, it is bound to be a success. But when the backward movement starts again, we must be careful and refuse to be carried away by that movement. The more we act that way, the more and more we neutralize that law. And by and by, we will notice that those backward movements will become weaker and weaker till they will disappear entirely, leaving only the forward movements. When we have reached that condition, the storm on the sea of our lives will come to an end, and we can say we have mastered the law of rhythm. The negative operation of it will cease, leaving only the positive force, which then will help us all the time. The Hermetists understood that by doing this, we can escape the swing toward pain. By rising to the higher plane, much of the experience that comes to those dwelling on the lower pain is avoided and escaped. The sixth of the universal laws is the law of cause and effect. This law is mutable, changeable. According to the Kybalian, every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. The Hermetic Masters understood that in reality, there is no such thing as pure change. This is explained in this way. How could there be something acting in the universe independent of the laws, order, and continuity of it? Something like this would be entirely independent of the orderly trend of the universe. This means it would be superior to it. The reason this cannot be is because there is nothing outside of the all, because the all is the law in itself. There is no room in the universe for anything outside and independent of law because the existence of such a thing would render it all would render all natural laws ineffective and this would mean the universe is a place of chaotic disorder and lawlessness this law pervades the three planes the physical mental and spiritual this law operates in this way every time we start something be it thought word or action we create a certain cause which will someday materialize in a corresponding effect if we start a positive cause, a right cause, there will be in due time a positive effect, and vice versa. Just when that effect will take place, no one can tell. It depends upon many circumstances, but it is unavoidably true, like a logical result in a mathematical problem. Whenever we have started a cause, we are powerless over its effect and can never change the effect. When we know that law and apply that law to our daily life, we can shape our own destiny exactly as we wish it. 
Naturally, we cannot straighten out past mistakes, but we can take them as lessons. In order to use that loss successfully in our lives, we must learn to handle it properly. The first and most important thing to do is to live in the ever-present now. What does that mean? Are we not living right now? Yes and no. To live in the present now means always do the best we can to start right causes now. That is why now is so important and why now holds for us the key to our destiny. The past cannot be changed. We have to take it as it is. But our future is completely in our hands and if we start the right causes should never cause us any worry as it will take care of itself because of the law of cause and effect. That is why we must be satisfied with today and not try to imagine or make certain calculations that it will work out this way or that way. Usually our calculations will be upset because in worrying about the future, we do not give enough attention to the present. And the last seventh of the universal mutable laws is the principle of gender. The Kybelian says gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. Everything has both masculine and feminine aspects. The masculine is directive and the feminine is creative. And ideally, these two principles and aspects must work together in harmony. The key is to find the balance of the yin and yang within yourself and everything you do. Gender in the hermetic sense and sex in the ordinarily accepted use of that word are not the same. Not only on the physical plane does the law of gender function, It also is manifested in the mind of each human being, be it man or woman. They have two genders expressed also in their mental selves. The mind of each individual has a self-consciousness which belongs to the male gender and a subconsciousness which belongs to the female gender. These two are definitely expressing two sides of our individual minds. According to author Baron Eugene Furson, author of the book, The Science of Being, which was published in 1923, man, who is the outward expression of the male qualities, which are energy, self-reliance, intellect, etc., are also latent and ready for expression of all the female qualities. On the other hand, love, patience, intuition, gentleness, etc., latent in men, whenever expressed as dominant qualities, manifest themselves in what we call woman. There's gender manifested in everything. Each principle is incapable of operative energy without the assistance of the other. In some forms of life, the two principles are combined in one organism. Everything in the organic world manifests both genders. There's always the masculine present in the feminine form and the feminine form in the masculine. No creation, physical, mental, or spiritual, is possible without this principle. The feminine and masculine are meant to be two parts of one whole. In conclusion, then, we can see that all seven laws of the universe work together. The path to mastering the laws and one's own mind is a difficult path to tread. However, it is our mental attitude, the knowledge of the operation of the laws, and faith in our power to overcome them, which enables us to master those laws.